Good morning and welcome everyone. As the fir first speaker just mentioned, <coughs> the three fundamental propositions of theosophy are the tenets on which the whole philosophy hangs. And he mentioned them to us. In discussing Kamadeva, how would we be able to apply those tenets to it? Well, the first fundamental proposes unity among all beings from the highest diva down to the elemental world. So this interdependence and unity is a fact in nature. And when we undertake the study of Kama, which is one of our principles, we are in fact delving into the first fundamental from that perspective. The third is the service to all beings, humanity uh, especially. So that also is here because for whom are we trying to understand our own principle? To benefit the whole. Being a part, we are here to benefit the whole. So the unity and the duty to all is there. What's the second fundamental? It's the laws of nature which finds its equivalent in us. So it becomes extremely important to understand the cosmic principle and be able to also apply them to ourselves. So we are not here to discuss the principles of man, but Kama is one of them. Which principle is it? There is the three higher principles, Atma Bodhimanas, the spirit, spiritual discernment and mind. That triad, the unity of that triad, goes from life to life. But the middle uh, principle in man is our passions and desires. And Mr. Judge, in his ocean, makes it specifically clear that this principle is a principle on its own. It does not come about because we have a physical body. Because when you look at the practices world over, you see the Hatha yogis trying to kind of eliminate the physical body from uh, existence. And they really torture themselves. But HPB also says that that is not going to purify this element in us, that this is a principle that we need to address and work with all on its own. What's the other three? Well, physical body is the lowest, which is not really a principle, it's just a vehicle. Then we have the astral body, which is the repository of this principle here. Our feeling nature is our astral. And above that comes um, the life principle, which then permeates the whole being. So the writing says, just as man takes the jiva from the universal and puts it within himself, and where it becomes prana, in other words, we're assigning portion of the universal and putting it to use in ourselves. Uh, everywhere it is called jiva. Now, Mr. Judge says it's Jivatma because it comes from Atman. It's the life principle and it is disseminated everywhere. But in us, it becomes prana. And HPB says, imagine a, uh, a sponge and it absorbs it in, and the sponge is the physical body, and it gives it motion and it gives it life. So as we take this and make it our own, so we are doing the same thing with Kama. So we take Kama and make it personal. What does that mean? Well, how do we personalize it? Carnal. We carnalize it. Oh, these are pens. And, and what does Kama mean? Kama is the passions and desires. Ah. Passions and desires. And the other thing is, in life, the mind works in a dual manner. 
the mind. When it works with this principle, mind plus this, it pulls it down to personality. So it is earthly. What, what about the other? When it pulls it up, it's going towards buddhi. And it becomes what? Wisdom, discernment, wisdom. So buddhi with atma going up gives us a spiritual discernment. With this going down, it gives us earthly passions and desires. Now, the, uh, Mr. Judd says both of these work without our feeling nature. Buddhi as well as um, Kama. So what are they? They're exactly the opposites. They're not separate. Kama is kind of upside down because of the other elements in it. And we're going to talk a little bit about instinct and intuition. And the human life, it is stated, lives with the feeling power inherent in ourselves. What guides us? What uh, instigates us? Our passions and desires. What else? Thought. Depending what our thought is <coughs> based on, then a speech and action <coughs> follow from it. But the desire principle is an independent principle in the body. The body does not give rise to it. Now, HPB also discusses Kamarupa in the Secret Doctrine. Kamarupa is the vehicle of Kama. But in life, Kama circulates. It's our feeling nature. Where is it <coughs> circulating? Everywhere it is circulating. It's the animal passion desire principle. It circulates in the blood. It circulates in the brain. It circulates everywhere in the physical body. Only at death, when the principles separate, does it become Kamarupa. In life, it is no Rupa at all. And it goes to its own sphere to disintegrate. Kamaloka is where it is. So what does it stand for? Well, she tells us the comic elements in men. What are they? Animals elements. Anger, lust, envy, revenge. And with the incarnated aspect of the manas, which is the lower aspect, the intellectual aspect in life, these comic elements circulate in the brain, in the organs of the body, and affects it, its health, and it shapes its future. Because what we do today enables us to come back in the next or future life and continue with it with what it is we are doing. Come out, this is defined by HPV, these are not my words. She says it can be defined as evil desire and lust, but it is also volition. Its most widely expressed, uh, spread expression is tanha. Uh, we have heard this word before. It is clinging to earthly life, clinging to earthly life. And this is what causes rebirth. Clinging to earthly life will make us come back because we crave that uh, clinging causes this craving for life, earthly life. Now, we're going to talk a little bit about its cosmic principle. What is it? It is the universal first consciousness, all-embracing desire that is for universal good. Its origin is for universal good when it is universal. 
in its first expression, it says, and I will directly quote from here, it is the first feeling of infinite tender compassion and mercy that arose in the consciousness of the creative one force as soon as it came <coughs> into life and being as a ray from the absolute. This desire is divine, therefore omnipresent and impersonal. Now, we had a little graph on this board last week with the last week's um, talk. We talked about the ray, but what you must remember, the whole is circular, okay? And when we put that dot in the middle of it, we are in Manvantara or in life, and the ray is the connecting link. This center exists in each human being too. And what do we call that? The spiritual heart. So we have that spiritual heart, but we also have senses. Why are the senses necessary? Because we get input from the environment, from the world we live in. But we must not make that sense ability all of it, because this is what has happened to us. We now have totally materialize ourselves, we sunk in it, and we have made that buddhi, which is a universal force for good, comic. We have carnalized it by taking our, a portion of it and using it in ourselves, we have carnalized it. These are not my words. This is where uh, the secret doctrine words. And we will read a little bit more. <coughs> Cosmic kama or desire is drawn in by men and it is appropriated and becomes the constituent of his sevenfold nature. It's the middle principle. So it says here absorbing some of the divine desire, men appropriates it and uses it for personal ends, thus transforming it, carnalizing it, so that it becomes the power that gratifies desire on the animal plane. It is <coughs> man who drags low the god of love and hurls him down into the pit of hell, where he becomes the devil of lust, the tempter, and ensnarer. And I repeat this passage from the Secret Doctrine. It is um, on page 260. It is not molecularly constituted matter, least of all the human body, Shula Sarira, that is the grossest of all our principles, but verily the middle principle, the real animal center, whereas our body is but its shell, the irresponsible factor and medium through which the beast in us acts all its life. And she says, if you think about it, you will understand it exactly as to what it means. What's the beast in us? Well, we just defined it a minute before. The kama elements become the kamic elementals. And elementals in the secret doctrine are described as the creative angels of the lower world. The animal center in man draws within its periphery, she says, these non-self-conscious but intelligence-possessing entities, and they become the feeders and nourishers of kama, and the producers of kamic elementals also called Tanhaig elementals. So we have the comic elements in us, and what did we define them as? Lust, vindictiveness, anger. These are our emotional nature, but we have good and bad on both sides, and this talk is 
uh, concentrated on the lower aspect of this principle because this student through this research understood exactly what they're getting at before this it was muddled up in my own mind so I can only give what I can understand so please remember we're all students of theosophy and this is such a great and vast knowledge presented to the world that we can only address bits and pieces of it even though in its um, wholeness it's one and obviously masters had an intent when they put it out into the world uh, because their concern was our benefit and no one else's so what we understand we can only share and what you can understand then we can add on to what is being presented today so, these karmic elementals within men tempt him to correspond with the ones on the outside because they're like those that are outside of us, so we are communicating with them all the time. And she says, unless we obtain magic wisdom, which is knowledge turned into wisdom, and she says, we will be subjected to this lifetime after lifetime and to moral ruin these are not my words R moral ruin so if we do not try to control them in other words they will control us because their action uh, from constant input from the thought and feeling process becomes crystallized and so they automatically do what we have imprinted on them to do so eventually they cause moral ruin why is that because we become mediumistic and meaning what we are passive if we are not constantly trying to deal with it we become passive and then they can take a hold of us and do what they like with us. So, Mr. Judd says, men's involution and evolution goes with all of the kingdoms, visible or invisible, of nature. So we are linked to them, whether we like it or not. We use them, but in turn, they can do the same thing to us. So, in the Hindu, um, mythology divine and pure Kama is referred to as Kama Diva and this becomes Eros in Greek mythology and Kama in men when it has become personalized at best then in us it is human personal and therefore selfish love it's personalized and at worst it becomes greedy and angry passion look around and uh, we see a lot of that around us greedy and angry passion <coughs> at, at best selfish love at worst greedy and angry love. Now, in the mythology of the Hindus, it is stated that, the Shi that Shiva, the great yogi, was sitting at meditation one day, and these feelings arose in him, and he emitted a ray from his eye and burned it to cipher, <laughs> nothingness. And HPB says, so must we learn to do the same thing. What exactly does that mean from mythology to actually appropriate that to humanity? What is it that must we do? How is this comma in the personalized aspect expressed? And again, this is not my expression, but I must say the truth as it is. Sexuality and lust. But that is not all of it. It also expresses itself in all of the emotion and feeling manifestations of the person. 
on both sides of the coin, good and evil. So Kama then is responsible for the good as well as the evil, but they are bringing this uh, obvious uh, aspect of it to the forefront because it is stated that the debasement of sex life in modern civilization indicates that the Kama principle is allowed freedom. It is not checked. It is allowed freedom, and that becomes li as license. We're giving ourselves a license to do it. Theosophy, it is a stated, and this is, please remember, the message from the masters is uncompromising when it comes to sex perversion because it calls it devilish in HPB's writings. She says, sex perversion are acts of black magic. Excess leads to perversion, and our civilization provides a notable example of it. And she says, do not believe that lust can ever be killed out if gratified or satiated. For this is an abomination inspi inspired by Mara. It is by feeding vice that it expands and waxes a strong like the worm that fattens on the blossom's heart. Mm -hmm. So if, if we say, oh, I'll just do it this once, <laughs> what is it going to do to us? It's going to repeat itself. And the next time, it's going to ask for more because it cannot be satiated by giving into it. It can be checked and controlled, but never satiated. Kama then, in nature, is the life procreating principle. And all of the kingdoms of nature joyously participate in this process. Look at the animal world. Watch the, the squirrels in the spring, watch the birds. The, the whole nature becomes alive because procreation season is about, and they joyously participate in it. But when it comes to us, it says that it should become a, a, stopping, a stepping stone to a spiritual plane instead of the reverse. But she says, absence of knowledge, and in these days, false and dangerous knowledge because theosophy is not an advocate of birth prevention, neither is it an advocate of sex perversion. She says that this then has led us to soullessness. It's very interesting, these words that are used, soullessness. Uh, instead of the spiritual plane, Soullessness. One S. Soullessness. What is it? What are they telling us? What do we learn? If it is a procreative principle in nature, it must be the same in us. It has a purpose for being there. Nature does not create anything or give us a divine principle to abuse it. It has its appropriate assigned function. It is procreation of the children <laughs> of the future generations to come. It is teaching family life, love, sacrifice, and service to the other. But where is that in our culture today? What has happened to women especially where equality has been proposed. But equality or what are we proposing? The two natures are not the same. We can earn same money. We can be respected in the world. Bes besides, without respect, with respecting women, nothing is going to flourish because the mother principle in nature is female. All of the gods in the previous uh, centuries before adaptation of Christianity were all female. Isis and uh, uh, Horus 
uh, the, look at the Egyptian mythologies. It's all female gods. There's no male god because the male knows his mother first as well. So it has been corrupted, unfortunately. So the family life is there to teach us how to learn to be humane, which then becomes a stepping stone to cultivating all the spiritual aspects of life. Because what is it that is going to hold the men and women together? It's not just material union. It's the ideology that holds the family together. That's really the important aspect of family life. If there's no core value, then all of the members are going to disperse. So what is the recommendation by the masters? Well, I've run out of time, but phew, OK. Uh, we'll bring it to a close uh, appropriately. What is the message uh, given for? That we have a dual task where Kama is concerned. We are here to learn to control and purify the Kamic elements by the knowledge of the esoteric philosophy. A man, she says, who is fast fixed in feelings nature cannot acquire knowledge. They can understand it by reading it, but they cannot assimilate wisdom truths. An immoral man can never become an adept of the good law. His mind perverted by wrong feelings will bring him wrong understanding and he will indulge in wrong practices. He who is fast fixed in feelings is allowing his enslaved lower manas to continue in its state of subjugation to Kama. So Kama has been then subjugated to the lower mind's will of the, bi will of the <coughs> wisp, wisp attitude, come and go. There's no stability, fluctuation. How can we then um, know where we are? Because this is a question everyone asks. And the answer is very simple by watching the nature of our own thinking and cerebration. In other words, become aware of the, not your feelings, but of your mind. How is your mind thinking? What is the thinking process in your mind? What is it stuck on? Is it stuck on, any, on anything? What is the ideology that holds from day to day? And <coughs> she says, egotism has a great deal of cunning in it. And unselfishness has to be also analyzed. Why are we doing it? To show off? Well, that's personality again. Why is that uh, important for us? Why are we doing it? And the master, this is a quotation from the master's letter. You must thoroughly put aside the personal element in you if you would get on with occult study. And he says, realize that social affections have any, anything, if anything, but little over the performance of the duty of an adept. So if we are going to follow in their footsteps, then this is the practice we also must uh, accept and follow. So one part of our fight is that we're going to learn to change the comic elementals, in other words, control them. And this is uh, freeing the mind the lower mind from the incubus of Kama, it is stated in the secret doctrine, because she says the higher manasic ego cannot function using the personality as a direct channel or vehicle if Kama is um, like an octopus holding the lower mind imprisoned in a shell. And we have to open it up and free it. So in this uh, respect, the master says, impersonalize your feelings. We have to become universal. But there is also constructive work that needs to be undertaken. And this is to unfold the power latent in Kama. What had we said before, Kama is also volition. Hmm. 
We dealt with this part, now volition. Um, kama is volition. What kind of volition? Will. The willpower that we exert comes from this center. And just like body in man is lying imprisoned because it's dormant, so this aspect of kama in us is also imprisoned. So, kama by becoming an octopus and imprisoning the lower mind has also lost its own power. This volition, how does it show in us? It shows as obstinacy. Obstinacy and will are exactly diametrically opposite to one another. Obstinacy is personalized kama, saying I am free to do as I like, giving itself license again, but the other willpower comes from this universal center. What is its concern? The well-being of all. That's what it is concerned about. And until we become universal, impartial, and impartite, we cannot access that center. This is how it works. So it says here, obstinacy is to will what egotism is to egoity self-righteousness to righteousness. The spiritual will and obstinacy do not function together, nor does egotism enable the inner ego to act, nor does self-righteousness help the unfoldment of righteousness. Now HPB in the Secret Doctrine 1 on page 267 says, the power to cognize is generally applied to mind but animals also know, and their knowledge, she tells us, is infallible because it is direct perception, animals. The direct perception power is related to kama. In men, it manifests itself as hunch, premonition, second sight, dream, inf dream impressions that vague feeling in you that says this is right it's correct intuition so losing instinct that enables the animal world to work in a precision uh, fashion man then loses his intuitional powers which are the crown and ultimatum of instinct kama by enslaving the mind suffers by losing the capacity to cognize. Very interesting. So, the instinctual feeling perception, when purified by knowledge and elevated by wisdom, and checked and verified by our reason, pulls its possessor where? And otherwise, it pulls it down to psychic, passive, and mediumistic. So when you sit in meditation, you cannot go passive. You have to occupy your mind, is what this is saying. So intuition, she tells us, needs to be developed. And it soars above the tardy processes of ratiocinative thought. Reason is the faculty of the mind, but intuition sits in the sanctuary of the heart. So we have to watch where our feelings are coming from. Are they heart feeling or are they the pit of the stomach, the solar plexus, which then is the spiritual um, center of these lower feelings. One then enables us to have knowledge, which is direct perception, and what exactly are we talking over here? The third eye. The real intuitive center is connected to morality. It cannot activate itself unless we start living a moral and ethical life. And she says sagacity is a constituent part of intuition. This student had to look it up. It is penetrating intelligence and sound judgment. 
so when that center is active in us then we obtain these as a natural outcome of it the light of the heart illumines the mind clarified of kama and reflects that light which may be defined as sagacity and it has a triple soul calmness knowledge and action so man acquiring knowledge obtains wisdom unfolding mercy in himself he evolves compassion and thus comes to possess that higher feeling by which he perceives accurately and understands the truth of things at present our desires and instinctive impulses of lower manas find expression in our lives but the higher manas is only expressed in words the outcome of our thought process so when we have these high intentions we cannot just express them but we have to learn to use correct perception and act it out in our lives and the master says action is necessary for our learning process this recommendation is made make your mind compassionate and your heart intelligent to achieve this it says we have to understand the three part um, assimilation process that we must go through one is cognition by instinct that that is feeling knowledge two <coughs> intuition is feeling perception and three the volition of kama is divine feeling please remember its concern is for the whole and it's beneficent now we will open it for discussion <coughs> yes from what uh some of what i get from is this okay some of what i get from what you've said it's not a matter of the devil falling to earth but just a question of the devil rising from the earth meaning that uh man creates through his desires these uh, entities that coalesce through his thoughts and all that and then you have this these entities that you spoke of elementals plus that force of energy that's given to them and they work havoc uh, on the individual as well as in the environment so again I, it's just a comment pretty much that uh, this devil that is external that's supposed to have come to earth and is opposing God is really a creation of man coming rising from the earth well um, it is easy to um, have a devil and put all these um, negative attributes on it so it's it is externalizing the power again but this power does exist in the cosmic level but it is Kamadiva and Eros in other words it sees but when it becomes Kama, it becomes blinded because it is purely passion and lust uh, instigated in the human nature. Now, uh, as, as stated, it had to be expressed in this fashion to bring it to the forefront because we as a society have become kind of a bit dormant. We accept whatever is out there, but this is specifically saying you have to stand up and be separate as Jesus said don't accept what the generality accepts if your moral and ethical nature is not uh, such that you can go along with it say so because we have to stand up for what is right and what is moral in our society our children we are raising them in this in this environment but your comment is well taken. Thank you. Yeah. Um, so, in reviewing some of what's on the board, uh, it's my understanding, and from your discussion, your presentations, which I thought was excellent, um, the path.
passion and desire, which would be the fourth element or the fourth principle, mm -hmm. which I think you're saying is a um, principle in and of itself. You say that HPV says Correct. it's a principle in and of itself. It, it is a be principle. It is not a product of the body. No. Okay. It's not, you know, the devil made me do it in my body. Mm -hmm. It's none of that. This is a principle. Correct. And on the physical plane, that principle is expressed in a duality, a higher and lower, just as the fifth principle, the mind, is also a duality. The duality so that there can be... It's the mind that's dual, yes. Well, the, the, well I, think the mind. I think, I think you're, you're clearly stating that the mind is dual. I mean, I think you've clearly Plus stated mana, that. Or going up to buddhi, it is, it's two, it's dual. Okay. Yeah. All right. Mm. And I'm, 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 I'm looking at what you presented. All right. And in looking at that, the passion and desire, the fourth principle, is also dual. Because, it seems to me from the presentation there, because you can go either the passion or the desire principle, which I think you're saying is comma. Mm -hmm. The desire principle oh, a plus linked here. the desire principle linked to the higher mind principle is um, closer to the uh, triad. The manas buddhi Atma triad than it is to the lower part of our nature, which would be the lower mind of the fifth of the fifth principle, with the desire, which takes us down through our animal nature, okay. which is which consists of <coughs> forces that are of a certain that have a certain pull that could pull us down, that when we're functioning on that level, you're functioning in the areas of vices. Not necessarily. Anger. Yes, well, yes. okay. Anger. Okay. Lust. Yes. Those principles are the lower principles that are associated with the lower nature of man. That, that, um, so that the mind, uh, also that the desire Principle, which has become dual. See, I'm, say, say, I'm okay. saying it, it seems to, it seems that no, that no, desire, no, no, no. passion, if you will please give me a has moment. to become has if to become give me dual. a moment to uh, answer your question, and okay. then you can make a second part to it. Okay. That is not what the student presented. Okay. Let me please clarify myself if I have no. uh, caused this um, dysfunction. Uh, what it is stated. is that mind is dual. There's a higher and a lower. Now this lower one is overtaken by Kama. This lower aspect. It is not a separate principle. It I works agree. in a dual way. Agreed. Okay. <coughs> What this student uh, said is that when the mind principle in conjunction with Kama is in the ascendancy, it pulls towards the personal, personal. It personalizes it. It takes the universal, brings it in, and carnalizes it. Because we said that first desire that arose in the universal has this beneficent aspect that it is concerned is the well-being of all. Right. It's universal. Right. And what the master says, if you want to become a server of humanity, so must you become impersonal and universal in your attitude, in your ideology, in your thought, but also exemplifying that in your act. Exactly. 
that it cannot just be an ideology uh, mentally understood metaphysically but not worked upon as a daily um, uh, practice of it so what this is saying is that the kama universal kama exists in its pure and uh, beneficent uh, aspect uh, ben as a beneficent and pure force but what man does is takes it in and carnalizes it. We, we're putting it in and using it as lust, passion, and those feelings. And all of it is not negative, is what the student read. That the family life, it is stated, is there to teach us control of these elements that become comic elementals if we do not control them. In other words, we give them license, then they will express themselves more and more. If you control them, you are doing what? Um, HP, HPB says, the force that was originally in us was buddhic. What is buddhic? That the centrifugal force force inside out we were like children we wanted to experiment and um, take advantage of the new physical world presented to us by learning how to function in it there's nothing wrong in that because look at children they are so energetic and they're full of life and they want to touch and experience everything so were we that way okay there's nothing wrong in that because it has a purpose but once we have become immersed in it we are now holding the mind imprisoned to kama as well and that lower mind in conjunction with our passions and desires serves the personal in us has no universal aspect to it but when we control it and do not give into it and become impersonal universal impartite and um, workers for the benefit of humanity the other aspect of kama comes alive what is it volition volition oh. volition what is it will will is a force she says willpower in the universe is the greatest force for good when it is handled correctly so this is what we have to do remove the kama or the octopus from the lower mind free it because until it is freed the intelligent centers in the brain cannot be activated until such time we cannot be trained this part of the work she says is iconoclastic we have to perform this on our own by freeing the lower mind from the octopus of kama once that is in effect to some degree the volition aspect comes into it and the willpower then comes to our aid what is the willpower this force that has become comic has to go back home as buddhi we brought it down and carnalized it. Now we are going to, uh, because Buddhi no longer is going to function in this uh, manner. It has been incarnated. Now we are going to release it and return it to its cosmic and pure form. Remember what the yogi did? Emitted a ray from his eye and turned it into ash. That is what we must also do in ourselves by looking inside to see how it is functional in us. Now, if you have a second part to your question, well, please ask well, it. Well, y your, your explanation has raised many questions. Okay. Uh, additional. Uh, but the question that has come to mind from what you've just said is volition. Does it, the first question I have about that, I have several questions about that. Does it have a Sanskrit name? Does it have volition? will is that is that a separate principle from desire 
or is that in desire? It is part of it. It uh, okay. she called it um, black magic, mm -hmm. evil, mm -hmm. lust, mm -hmm. and then she says, but the second part of it of our work. First part is to control it so that the comic elements do not become comic elementals by being concretized in that manner. So that tanha or thirst for life then loosens its hold. That's the first part. But the second part is by controlling this um, in ourselves, how are we controlling it? Home life is supposed to become, she says, a stepping stone to a spiritual planes to godliness because when we release this volition the willpower comes to our aid and she has these words that we said it ex exhibits <coughs> itself as hunch premonition second sight dream impressions power of direct perception so it becomes activated. So you, th you say that becomes intuition. Well, it is instinct yeah. in its pure form, right. but we lost it because Kama and the lower mind together has caused havoc in us. But well, what you just read from that, that's intuition, right? No, this is Kama. This is the volition aspect of Kama. That leads to intuition. But it goes towards intuition. Yes, okay. Instinct is direct perception in the animal world. We have lost it because we have bound it to the lower mind. The two together is totally personalized and carnalized at this stage of our development. Mm -hmm. So she says uh, we have two part work. One is to become impersonal and universal mm -hmm. and the other part is to work with the mind principle in ourselves to see where we are to learn to control it because not to give license to this principle in ourselves so when, it, when the volition is freed yes you're universal you're becoming universal All right, and, and now we want to deal with the uh, level of karma manas is there a level that's karma mana Kama manas is when it works together. At this uh, stage of our development, the manas and the kama work together because the passions and desires make it come about. The lower mind works with the passions and desires, bringing about what the personal self wants. Money, position, power, more, more, more. All mine, none for you. The other way, it works for the other. It is for the benefit of the all. So you, you become concerned, how is the other doing in your family, for instance? How can I make this um, extend help to my family members? Because this is where we learn to start first, because we love our family and we're connected to them. But then, once we have learned how to deal with that, then we move into the community. All, all of this work perhaps happens in a united way. We're working with the family, we're working with the community, and then we move into the arena of the national field. And, but we have to cultivate these correct virtues first. This is not an ability comes from the outside. It is the inner man being able to work through the personality, the, the real I ego of the higher working through the personality. We have to establish it so that it can do it. And that leads me to my next question. And that um, is now we're talking Manas Bodhi level of consciousness for the individual. Um, and, and Manas Bodhi is the uh, the same, and this is a question, I put it in the form of a question, but this is what was a, what I was <coughs> su suggesting, is that that becomes um, the desire linked to um, a more, a, 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 more uh, a real uh, point in terms of 
manas and discernment, spiritual, the manas buddhi, because <coughs> now the higher self is being expressed, because you're reaching up above the lower nature, no longer dealing on that realm, no longer dealing with the lower mind, no longer dealing with the, well, you have the lower desire principle. You have overcoming. Now, now you're dealing with, well, there's a level that exists, I'm saying that in terms of identifying the level, all right? Whether you, whether you individually overcome it or not, at least the level is there. So at the level of, of, uh, of, of consciousness that takes you, from the, takes you from the higher mind, the higher aspect of the fifth principle linked to the sixth principle. Okay. Now, that it, to me seems to be the goal <coughs> or the direction <coughs> on the, arc, the upward arc that you refer to. You said that when you're on an arc of ascendancy, okay, then these things are happening. Uh, and I guess that's, and, and what I thought you were saying is that what's happening is that if you're striving to raise the level of consciousness of man or yourself, then you need to understand that the lower part of your nature is not really you, and that your, your physical concentration, your level of consciousness of it, needs to change and understand that you have a higher nature and look to it. Okay, And that is separate and apart it, from... No, the nothing is separate. It's all connected. Well, I would beg, I would, I would suggest, uh, if you, say, you, if you say connected, let me make the distinction that I'm making. In terms of the, of consciousness, okay, you have as, I understood, levels of as consciousness. I understand it, as I understood your presentation, mm -hmm. that the reincarnating principle mm -hmm. is going to be Atma Bodhi Manas. Correct. So that's the real person. That's the real man. That's the individuality that okay, goes from so one life to the next. at the time of death and after death, Okay, the disintegration process, I thought you also said that that lower nature disintegrates. The physical body dies, the astral body uh, separates from the physical body, attaches to the lower desire nature, you said. Then at some point, it, this, it separates from, its, from those two things separate, desi the lower desire nature and the, um, the lower mind. And it and all of them eventually just in, and as well as the life principle, the life principle as well that was in the astral body, disintegrates. So that whole four level na lower nature that you described no longer becomes real. Let me please make a statement here. The body is made up of elementals, Correct. and your imprint is on them. Okay. They if they are can high, they will find you and come back to you in your next incarnation. Okay. The astral body is electromagnetic. Okay. It has your electromagnetic imprint on it. Okay. The jiva is a general principle in the universe. When it is in you, it becomes prana. Mm -hmm. And when you are at death separated from your physical body, the prana then returns to jiva. Okay. The mind is only one principle. It acts in a dual way in incarnation. Its function is dual, mm -hmm. but it is one principle, mind. It has two component parts. And HPB says each one of these also refers to a consciousness, a level of consciousness in you, mm -hmm. as well as a plane of <laughs> substance. Okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. so nothing is lost. The lower aspect of that mind where that was kamik yeah. will go to kamaloka for its disintegration. Then only does kama becomes kamarupa, the vehicle, whereas in life it is just kama because it works with your feelings and with the elements or, and circulates in the body, however that emotional nature expresses it, whether it is lust, whether it is passion, whether it is angry passion, whether it is love for your loved one in the home, because all of it is not negative. As said, the animal world perfectly follows the intention of the universal plan 
and brings this joyous uh, unity uh, during the um, procreation season. Man needs to fit himself into that same pattern and go along with the universal plan. What is it? To become impersonal, to become impartite, to become universal in the sense that we are at the service of the other because HPV says the higher aspect in man is there and is there to serve willingly. It's the personal aspect that wants to be served. Yeah. Exactly the opposite. And that is what carnalizes this principle and hurls it down to earth because these elementals are the creative angels of our universe. We have a responsibility to them to uplift them. So nothing is lost. This part, Atma Bodhi Manas, is that individuality that goes from life to life. Okay. But all the rest, as unfinished business, depending how you conducted yourself in this life, will be your inheritance in your next life. They will find you, they will give you a new physical body, they, you will have another na um, uh, astral body with your emotions, and the Jiva principle, you will again designate part of it to yourself as prana, and uh, depending how this uh, works, and I will come back to you after I um, answer Andra's. And, and thank you for that clarification. I, I, I do understand, thank you so much. Yes, Andra. Um, it seems as though, and I, I, I cannot speak or articulate it in the way that you do, uh, or the way that Peter does, uh, but it seems like there are certain principles in existence, and forgive me if I'm not using the right vocabulary, but all of these things are in existence. The potential is to utilize all of these principles or whatever does exist in existence for a higher purpose. How we use it, how we use passion, how we use desire. We can have a desire to serve others. We can have a passion for service, a passion. So all of these things in existence can either be used, as you said, I think for universal uh, benefit of all, or for uh, uh, the uh, carnal desires of the personal self. body, the <laughs> personal self. Mm -hmm. uh, so a question that I have is, uh, I know meditation uh, would enter into this, but in order to, um, uh, spiritual teachers say, we need to use these universal principles and divinize them, meaning um, uh, use them for higher purposes, and change our behavior. So always the question is, and the key to life, <laughs> All right. if uh, you might be able to give us a little clue, is what is involved um, to cause that, um, that change within us, that pivotal change to um, uh, change from concern of self to concern of the all? Well, that's a very loaded question <laughs> with many, many parts. But in relation to this particular talk, uh, as you expressed it, that desire principle has to be elevated. Because uh, are we able to get rid of it? Or can we refine it and make it useful? Because what is it? What, what are those uh, feelings? They're all electrical, intelligent lives. And we have motion, put them in motion in that way. But she also says it requires indomitable willpower to change it. This word is not mine. Indomitable willpower. But then where does that we just <laughs> talked about it. The volition aspect of kama is will. And when we separate kama from the lower mind function, you're releasing the volition of kama. And that volition is will. So it comes to your aid from the higher aspect. Because 
you cannot get rid of your principles. You are going to um, use them as expressed by yourself for a higher purpose. So what did the master say? Impersonalize your feelings. Do not give in to your personal feelings, but learn to impersonalize them. For instance, you get up in the morning and you say, what am I going to eat today? Isn't that a personal concern? Are you concerned if your neighbor has no food? Are you concerned to share your food with them? Or one other. Remember when Buddha came 600 BC, he begged twice a day to eat because he said, I work for humanity. I do not have time to earn m income to support myself in this way. So discrimination then needs to be cultivated. We need to have discrimination. Discrimination and intuition go hand in hand because we cannot become wise until these powers, perceptive powers, are active in us. And uh, we cannot activate them if we continue to be personal. What is personal? Money, power, more material things. And Buddha says we don't need more material things. We need a higher use of what we have. These are not statements. These are, have, these are axioms and mantras that we have to internalize and then externalize them in our actions. In other words, we're going to put it into practice not just verbalize it, because HPV many places says the passions and desires with the lower aspect of the mind is what propels our activity in the universe. But the other is mute and from airlessness dies. What's mute in us? The higher mind, the buddhi aspect of our nature does not um, find expression. In, the, in our daily life, in our practicing the, those axioms. So if I'm impersonal, would I have any concern for myself? This friend of ours, uh, her name is Soraya, I used to say, I'm ready to depart any time. And I used to say, where are you going? And she used to say, well, you have to put everything in order. You should not have any unfinished business. In other words, if you have worldly things, have you assigned them a place to go? How are you going to use it? You're just going to leave it all to your child? Or are you taking a portion of it and universalizing that power? Because after all, we are custodians of that uh, universal wealth. Or are you going to share what you have each day? She used to say, oh, I know these poor people and I'm going to go shop for them. This is putting that principle into effect in our own lives and not just using it metaphysically. And this is what the master says we must do, that we must enable the universal aspect to work through the higher mind and buddhi. And as we give it voice, <coughs> its power increases. Yes, Veer? Well, you know, continuing along the line of the spiritual growth and, and development. Five more minutes. Um, uh, and we will in, finish. In, in, in moving from in moving from the lower aspect to the higher aspect, then it seems to me what you just said, to clarify it also, is that the will has to be freed from lower desire and in order to reach up to a consciousness of Buddhi Mana. And, and, and you seem to, seem to say especially or something like that, 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 with this, that with this will then that process can happen. Because it, it sounded like that you were saying like this will is the will to do this. 
and only this. Okay. Well, those two aspects, right? Well, okay, that's, that's what there I want to... Go ahead. Because you, 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 you cannot that. really do anything without, without those passions and desires activating it. So you're using it, but for personal purposes. The other, the one that she uses, a capital <coughs> W, is the volition of Kama. Well, that's what I'm focusing on. Yeah, that, okay. That, that one is the only one I'm concerned with now. Well, right, you have to we've release it. We've already identified it. That, that man's quest is not to, is not to dwell in a, in a lower nature, but is to transform yes. himself to a higher nature. Absolutely. That, 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 that is exists, the key. That also exists in his life. If yes. He has the consciousness to understand. We cannot it. all at once become, but slowly move in that direction. But, if one, if, but man has the ability to have that consciousness. Uh, right. It's so part of you. Yes, so, the, absolutely. So, the so, so the Buddha Mana's consciousness of man. That's is where the, the realm masters in which are. I'm speaking on. Masters are the masters are the completed process. Well, I'm not okay, and, and I'm talking about the imperfect. I'm talking about the the, 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 the process starting at the beginning, and of of, of, of of understanding. So that in order to do. Good. In order to in order to think and operate out of a um, so that your actions, whether you're doing with this on a, the earth or in your family or your community or yourself, is actions that support health and harmony in the world. Absolutely. Okay. So in order to function on that level, the desire that becomes the will to do that. Yes, absolutely. Um, has to be connected, or it ha is what I'm saying. That it seems to me that that's what connects. Okay, think of it this way. What connects the the higher mind? Think of it this way. Yes. As your thought process is moving in the direction of the universal, so all the other centers move in that direction, mm -hmm. because the higher is there. It comes to your aid when you invite it in. Mm -hmm. And I must finish it at this point. Okay. Thank you for er uh, all of the questions. And I will personally answer your questions if those uh, do exist. Uh, John? <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Thank you. I want to share something that 